Hello, it's Bridget from Focus on Living. Today I'm joined by Richard and R Richard has has been or was diagnosed with early um, um, mild d dementia. Is that right, Richard? Yes. <laughs> okay. Yes. Uh, I'm here, we're here, I'm here to talk to him today and Richard, can you tell me a bit more about you? H how old are you? Uh, at the moment, 69. 69, great. Yes. And what do you do work-wise? Um, practicing Melbourne accountant. Mm -hmm. So, so your the diagnosis. Tell me a bit more about that, and how did you? What does that mean, first of all? Well, I knew something was wrong five years ago. I'm not the kind of person that's going to retire and do nothing. Yeah. Um, so I was really. I knew something was wrong five years ago, and I started meddling around with mindfulness but I never really embraced it to the level that I should have um, until I got the clinical diagnosis 12 months ago then I knew I had to get serious. So for a lot of us we all forget things so what was what was happening in your life that you realized that there was something wrong and this just helps people to understand some of the signs yeah, um, recalling data. Um, the, the memory, the basic subconscious men memory is good. But accessing that memory, I was hitting great, I was having great difficulty. Um, I use it, I use the analogy of got a house full of wonderful things like computers and televisions, but if the switchboard's broken, um, the television and the uh, computer aren't going to work, are they? <laughs> No, no. So give me an example. Uh, what might be something, so recall, recalling data, is that like um, in your practice as an accountant? Yes. Um, you know, I, I worked in a, in a commercial area of commercial law mm -hmm. and audit, and um, naturally we're, we're backed up there with some fairly um, deep and intensive uh, matters, client affairs, uh, legislation. Recalling that and being having, having it readily available was becoming a problem for me. Okay. And so what was, what was your next steps after... So was there an actual event that happened that you went, oh, my God, I now need to do something about this, that you got no, off your No, it's been progressive, um, and I'm, I'm, all, I'm fairly proactive. I knew that I had to do something. Um, the first thing to do was to look at the clinical side of it, and the second thing was the holistic side of it. Okay, so what do you mean by the clinical side? Well, the clinical side is um, a proper diagnosis and the investigation as to any drug therapy, if that was appropriate. Naturally, I would prefer to avoid drug therapy, but when it's there, it, it, it can be good. And so I, I took my clinical diagnosis as far as I could, and I'm happy that I've reached the appropriate conclusions. Okay, so the clinical diagnosis, so did you go and have some tests done and they yes. came back with yes. um, the, the, the... Early stage. Early yep. stage, okay. Um, so, so then you... Uh, what did you do next in terms of to help yourself? Well, not just the clinical side of it, but I also uh, approached a holistic doctor, a uh, wonderful woman, uh, and... Uh, she confirmed that diagnosis and confirmed a pathway, um, which which was great, and um, mm -hmm. I'm very happy that I have come a long, long way in in uh, reinstating from a dangerous situation. Okay, so 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 that pathway. Tell me some of the things, the life, the the lifestyle changes that you've made over this time. Yeah. Um, because you talked to me food really was about critical. food. Mm. Yep. Um, Where were you at with we, food? We're third or fourth generation Australian, but our family diet was pure English. Far too much sugar, far too much starch, far too much wheat and dairy. Um, giving all that up or giving it up for 90% of the time um, has a fantastic effect on my body because I also had Crohn's disease. Uh, that's now all, um, all abated. Uh, and I want to stick to that diet. I've given up beer, jokingly, and um, 
anything that is saturated with sugar and, and, and fat uh, is not good for anybody. Okay, so, so how, do you, how has it made you feel um, now, that, now that you've cut those things out? Um, so were you lethargic? Pro- or yes, were you, the, mm-hmm. the, the brain fog. I, I investigated the brain fog. Yeah. I investigated, most importantly, the chronic fatigue factor. Mm -hmm. Um, I've now been able to have significant reductions in that area, and my processing ability is improving all the time. Mm. So what time period has that been over? Well, it's been over a five-year period, but it really has been ramped up over the last 12 months, particularly since the clinical diagnosis. And I've been fortunate to get into a study with Monash University. Yes. That was fantastic. And now I'm with um, some various peninsula practitioners in maintenance because you do tend to go back to your old ways. Uh, Is this food-wise or are we now talking about what? Both. Both? Okay. Mm-hmm. Yep. Both. Um, so do they keep you We're currently sitting in a bakery and I've been able to walk away from <laughs> some of the delicious food that was in there. And I've had to learn to do that. Yeah. Mm. So, so uh, um, besides food, what other lifestyle changes have you made? Oh, there. And what have you? Uh, I've always have... lived in a tough and dirty business world. So um, being busy, do you mean? Yes. Well, mm. it's, it's a little more than that. Um, it, it's it's your typical male-dominated business world, and um, I sort of realised that I was mentally exhausted because I'd worked too hard for too long. I guess. Yeah, yeah. So has that meant that now you've stepped back? Are you working as intensely as, as you used to? No. Um, I scale down to several key clients. Yeah. Um, I work on their consultative committees or, or a director of their corporations. Um, and uh, as far as I'm concerned, my processing and management of that um, have improved immensely from someone who's probably well over the 65 level. Okay, so what about, now we were talking earlier that one of the other really important changes that you've made or things that you've integrated is meditation. So um, tell us about why you integrated meditation. Mm. Um, Not understood by a lot of males, I think. Um, I knew that um, with a prejudiced uh, hippocampus and hypothalamus that What's that? Oh, it's, it's the switchboard of the brain. Okay. Mm-hmm. And, and the emotional centre and the management centre of your brain. Um, so what intent... And, and, and a, a, um, a diagnosis I had that, you know, clinical diagnosis is... Clinical mindfulness is what you need. And um, I found attending more senior mindfulness classes has been an immense help in me understanding where I need to go and what I need to do and I'm totally convinced this is the final pathway after the health issues, um, diet management. Um, We need to look at ourselves and manage our own processing diet abilities. And and I guess that's why we're doing this interview today as well, because we have we know that we have an ageing population, mm-hmm. and I think it's third on on the list of chronic diseases now mm. is dementia. Yep. You know, in our ageing population, so you'd say that that the mindfulness has helped you, but in what way? How does it help you with your dementia? Because some people wouldn't understand that. Yeah. So What's it done for you? Well, I might suggest that my conduct over the last decades has um, impaired my memory to some extent, um, probably through a form of exhaustion. Um, And I have learned to manage that and to learn to manage myself when I'm in overdrive. Um, And I think it makes a better processor in terms of my professional ability, that I'm much calmer, I'm much more visual and decisive um, I always know when I'm being lied to um, or bullshitted oh, to. there we go. So that's, that's been a benefit out of the <laughs> meditation practice. I think I always knew when I was being lied to. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and, hey, that's life. It doesn't upset me. Um, and I, I've learned to manage myself a lot better, and I feel so much better for it. 
Okay, 